When I was in college, I went to this thing called a rainbow gathering and we had to walk five miles in and go camping. And what I discovered was many different things in that journey of camping with five, 10, 15,000 people in the middle of nowhere. First of all, I met all kinds of people and there were people that were really into recycling and taking care of the earth and make sure everything was good like that. I would bump into really spiritual people doing sweat lodge ceremonies and drumming and different kinds of ceremonies. I'd go to another section of this huge encampment and there would be people doing drugs. There were people teaching about loving and caring for the earth. And it was very fascinating. It was very connecting. And what I realized at that moment was that I knew nothing. And there were so many things in this world that I didn't know and I needed to know all of it. So I literally went on a journey. I went on a journey of discovery from that moment. It turned everything on. I'm like, oh, I didn't. I guess I have to be this kind of person. I have to be that kind of person. I literally went and got a master's degree in environmental education. I took chakra healing classes and yoga to awaken my spiritual self. I probably did some of the, the drug things along the way. But what I realized when I was in my 20s was that all of a sudden I was there. Everything I had put into motion, here I was. I had learned so much. And I had one of those things called an aha moment. Have you ever had an aha moment? Did you know that stress and confusion can block them? And would you like to have more aha moments? Well, our guest today is Z Newell. And Z is a transformation catalyst, an inspirational speaker, consultant, trainer, and author of the recently released Amazon bestseller, Ignite Your Magnificence. Z will introduce the basic com components of his MQ formula. It's when you increase your magnificent quotient, it reduces stress, increases happiness, and allows you to cultivate more aha moments. Z, thank you so much for being a guest on today's show and sharing your magnificence with us. Welcome to the show. Thank you, it's exciting to be here with you. Oh, I'm so excited that you're here. But before we get into the show, if you're new to my page, you're new to Facebook, you're new to the channel, welcome to the Randy Light Experience. Welcome to the show. And you're probably wondering what's going to happen today. And I wanna share that with you and you might even be wondering who I am. So let me take care of that now. My name is Randy Light and I am a peak performance coach. I'm a hypnosis instructor and I'm a healer. And for the past 11 years, I've hypnotized thousands of children and adults to break through whatever is in their way so they could be their best version of themselves. I'm also the author of the book, The Essential Four, and the creator of the Essential Four system, it combines hypnosis with coaching and it gives you everything you need to get out of your own way, to get from where you are to where you wanna be, so you can be in a peak state whenever you want, wherever you want. And why is that important? Because when you learn to manage your state, you can have more aha moments. When you learn to manage your state, you can be your best version of yourself. And so I encourage all of you, as you're going to find out, to uh, uncover and release those things that are holding you back so you can be your best version of yourself. Well, also, one more thing. So today, and almost all my guests and myself have really cool techniques and hypnotic experiences to offer you. And so each and every show has what's called an experience. And that's why it's called the Randy Light Experience. And that includes today, Z is going to take us, if we have time, through three really cool shifting exercises that are going to take us to awaken our passions, become more present, and overcome resistance. So definitely want to stay on for all of that. Now, our guest today, Z, is his mission is to inspire people's magnificence by igniting passionate engagement in your life and in your work. And Z also delivers keynote speakers, uh, keynote speaking, keynote, he's a keynote speaker, there we go. He's a dynamic workshop leader. He trains groups and organizations on a wide range of topics. 
all guaranteed to inspire, inspire magnificence. I love that. I am so excited, Z, that you are part of this, that you're taking the time to do that. And before we get into the show, which we're almost there, you guys, right now, let us know you're here. Hit the like button, hit the love button, send some of those bubbles across the screen. Those are fun and cool and we like to see those. And leave comments comments say hello we want to know that you're here and that lets facebook know something really important is going on and something really important is going on so leave a comment say hello and ask questions when you engage you remember things more and it'll help you with the experience and it'll help us and one more thing i'm going to ask you to do before we fully get into the show is to share this if you know someone who wants to reduce stress who get wants to get their head and heart working together who wants to be their best version of themselves and increase magnificence share this with them right now share this love and light just share it on their facebook page or timeline or something like that right now so thank you everybody for joining us today and this is whether you're listening live or listening to the recording you can share this right now and you can send some of the bubbles and say something now and so now we're already getting people val hello welcome uh, Val says hello to both of us randy and z so i'll see you can see that there mark says even guys are into this <laughs> thanks mark all right you guys z dear you are okay so how did you get interested in this topic uh, uh, aha moments did you have one of those major aha moments like i did um in your life i, I did i need to ask you one thing i forgot how long is this show so ah. i it's about 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes, 45 at the tops. Okay, great. So, yes, I have had a lot of uh, aha moments. And what I really want to talk about today is what I call micro aha moments. But I will share briefly. I had an aha moment a number of years ago. I got botulism, which is extreme poisoning from food and I was completely paralyzed. I mean, completely paralyzed, laying in a hospital bed, couldn't talk, couldn't move for a number of months. My recovery was long. I won't go into a whole long story, but I lost a lot of weight. I could barely walk. I couldn't lift my arms or anything. Wow. One day I was home trying to recover and I was upset because I'm a doer. I had a farm, I had animals, I had a garden. I couldn't do anything. They told me it would be a year before I would recover. And my daughter looked at me, she's three, said, what, what's the matter, you know, daddy? And I said, I just can't do anything. And she said, yes, you can, yes, you can. So I got up, I was inspired by her. <laughs> and I got Carhartt, it was November, it was brisk and, and, and foggy and chilly out. And I shuffled across to the barn. It took forever to get to that barn. It was a hammer get up outside of my door. And it took forever to get across like 100 feet or whatever to the barn. My horse was out there. And I didn't even know what I was doing, why I picked up the hammer or anything. I'd see my horse for the first time in months because I'd been in ICU. And suddenly I saw this nail sticking out of a post next to the horse. And I, I knew why I had picked up the hammer. It was crazy. I knew I had to hammer that nail into that post. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but let me tell you, I had to hold my arm up with my other arm because the weight of that hammer was like 50 pounds. And it took me forever. I'd swing and miss and swing and miss. And, you know, finally, I was able to drive that nail into that post. And in that moment, I realized that this was not an international nail driving competition. This was about me moving from being paralyzed to driving a nail into a post. I was doing something. It was just amazing that I could do that. And it, it was an aha moment. And the, the way I guess I would put that in words, it's in my book, is never compare yourself to anybody else. All of the problems of this life begin when you compare yourself to somebody else. So that was huge for me, you know, just to be yourself, to accomplish what you can 
from where you've been to where you're going. It's that was a major moment for me. And since then, I've just been inspired to look at my own life and how I can be more magnificent in it and how I can help other people do the same. So, wow. Okay. Well, that's, that's fascinating. And I did read it in your book. And if you guys want to know more, you can read the whole story. It's really, really awesome. Um, but okay. So you had also mentioned something when we talked earlier about like micro aha moments. So is that compare yourself? I mean, that's a huge one because you not only, you, you understood not comparing yourself on such a deep level. So that to me is a major aha moment when somebody gets that. Maybe to you, that's a micro. I don't know. That's, that was a major one. That was a big one. Um, and, and that is one that is important for all of us. And that's not the basis for all of this. That just happens to be my aha moment. And I also know that the minute you start to compare yourself to other people, you begin to doubt yourself. This okay. So what you said earlier really resonated with me. You're talking. Your work is about hypnosis and managing your state of being. My work is the same thing. I don't do it through hypnosis, but managing your state of, of being by doing two things. Number one, increasing your self awareness. And number two, really diving down and finding out what you're passionate about in this life. And so the book talks about how to look at both of those components and then how to fit them together. But the other thing you mentioned was going from here to there. No matter where you are in your life, if you're paralyzed and need to drive a nail or whatever it is, there's going to be something invariably that's going to show up between here and there that is going to keep you from being magnificent. Okay. And so if we can increase our awareness of what's happening in this, that's keeping you from being magnificent, that is the piece I want to capture. All right. Now, just to fast forward there, I talk in the book about three things. The three headed mind monster is what I refer to it as. <laughs> your fears, right? Your fears, your self-doubt, which is that self-worth piece, and your limiting beliefs. Now, what I really like to do is tell a story that illustrates a micro aha moment. And so bear with me here because I think that this illustrates exactly what I'm trying to, the result I'm trying to get for people. This is a true story. I sit in men's circles and one day a guy came into the circle and he told this story. He's a carpenter, so he does carpentry work. And he came home and he was really angry at his girlfriend, okay? He turned to her, he said, did you take the tape measure from my trying to measure cabinet to go to the store? I lost an hour, why did you do that? Well. Honey, I was measuring for curtains in the bedroom. If I told you once, I told you a thousand times. And then he stopped. All of a sudden, this is what he said. It was like I saw myself getting angry at the woman that I love. And I just stopped. And without words, asked myself, you know, is this how you want to treat this woman that you love? So in the middle of blowing up, he just saw himself and stopped and took a breath and said, you know, I'm sorry to be angry like that. I, I, I was upset. I needed my tape measure. I love you. Why don't you give me the dirty, greasy tape measure and you take the brand new one that I bought and let's just start again. And I'm going to go for a walk and I'll come back and we'll just start again. Okay. So breathe into that because what happened in that moment is what I'm calling an aha moment and the tools that I'm trying to give people. And they're not complicated. The confusion and stress comes from this massive distance in our life, which is basically about 12 to 18 inches. If you can see on my screen, it's from your head to your heart. What happens between your head and heart 
is so confusing. Do I listen to this? Do I go out with this person? Do I take this job? What does my heart say? What does my head say? And how do we sort through it all? So that's what I call the M2 formula. And the story is an illustration of what I'm trying to accomplish, which is helping people to capture those micro aha moments, to catch themselves and make a shift. I'm going to take a breath and let you comment. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. I think that the essential four and my work can help people be in control of that moment. That was such a gift. And if we could all stop and have that level of self-awareness, I literally told my client yesterday because she gets social anxiety and she she um, got a, got a um, advancement and became a supervisor and she was at a brainstorming meeting and she was sweating. And I was like, well, take a moment and just go behind yourself, <laughs> you know, just like you said, take a moment and just not, instead of being so in your body, take a moment to look and look around at other people, you know? So right. it's interesting that this guy just automatically did that. And let me just say, Mark just said something. So Mark says, oh wait, magnificence, let's see if I can get it to show up. Magnificence seems so epic and legendary. How do we go after it um, modern day to day? Well, this is that's a great uh, comment and it sounds huge, but this is what I'm saying is, if you can catch yourself in your micro aha moments, you know, we all, some people never have a big aha moment in life and others have one or two. And what I'm trying to say is they're all around us in the air. We just don't stop to receive them, okay? So I, I actually have two books, okay? My first book is a little story, Brink, Don't Go Back to Sleep. And then there's this one. And this one I wrote after I read The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And in this book, I talk about The Watcher. And you can call it whatever you want. Witness consciousness from thousands of years ago in Eastern studies. I call it the watcher. The number one step toward achieving the magnificence mark and for everybody in my mind is the self-awareness, the watching yourself, developing the habit to do that. So let's take a minute to try that real quickly. Okay. Yeah. Which is what we, this is a hands-on show. I love that. So, and this is, I'm going to make this brief, but as you're watching this, you're somewhere, you're sitting in your car, you're sitting in your living room, wherever it is, you're wa or you're watching this on the replay. Notice, begin to notice as you're sitting there, what are the things that are going on in your physical presence? In your physical presence, is the room cold? Is it warm? Do you uh, have to? To go up, get up and go to the bathroom right now. Show you don't want to miss anything. Does your toe hurt because you stubbed it? Is your back aching because you were climbing at the gym like I was last night? Um, what's going on in your body and your physical presence? Don't judge it, just notice it. Do you feel like taking your shoes off? I mean, what's happening right now? Is there background noise that's distracting you? So your physical, your awareness of your physical presence, both in your body and in your environment is the first level of just standing back here and watching what's happening. So is, is now, that part of the magnificent, so, cause I don't know if we all understand exactly what you mean by magnificent quotient. Is that one element that when you do that, you start to increase your, mag your MQ? Okay. So MQ is, uh, there's IQ, your, this uh, intelligence up here, and there's EQ, which is emotional quotients or emotional intelligence, which is your awareness about your emotions and how you interact with people. MQ is like taking those things to the next level, going past EQ, using EQ and the self-awareness, this is part of what we're doing in this exercise, but also adding the element of your personal passion, okay? So, um, so MQ is about your magnificence quotient and achieving your most magnificent state is combining the self-awareness piece. That's, the formula is 
A-H-A. The first A is for awareness or self-awareness. That's what we're doing now in this exercise. The next is for H, for your heart or your heart source vision. And the third is action. What do we do in the world with this information? So A-H-A is your awareness, your heart, and your action as you break through, okay? Just to answer your question. So now to go back to the exercise, exercise number one is about your self-awareness. Begin to develop this watcher back here that is aware of your physical presence. Now go a little deeper into your emotional presence, okay? What am I feeling right now? Maybe you are up, still upset about something that happened with a friend before you log. Maybe you're feeling stressed because you have a project and you're just using this broadcast as a distraction to keep yourself from your work. Um, and emotionally, in our men's work, we break it down to: Am I mad? You know, angry. So mad, glad, afraid, or ashamed. Those are five core emotions, and typically you can combine most other things that you're feeling into mad, sad, glad, fear, or shame. So are you aware of how you're feeling emotionally right now? Okay. So, so begin to cultivate this watcher that notices as you go through your day what you're feeling. Just a question of noticing it. So the minute that I notice that I'm angry, like my friend Jake did in that story, the minute that you notice that you're angry or you notice that you're impatient um, or you notice that you're feeling afraid about something, you detach yourself just a tiny bit from the actual anger in your body or the actual impatience. So noticing is the first step in detaching yourself. Now, the third level of awareness is your thought. So we've noticed our physical, we've noticed our emotional. Now let's notice our thoughts. Do you know that we have between 50 and 60,000 thoughts per day, per day? So maybe right now you're watching and you're judging that, oh, who is this guy? He thinks he has all the answers, okay? Um, or maybe you're maybe you're getting impatient to get to the bottom line and you're noticing that in yourself. What else are you noticing that's going on in your thoughts in this moment? In I just heard this the other day for the first time. It's fascinating. I was watching a spiritual film. In some ancient cultures, they actually considered thinking to be this a, a sense, just like seeing and hearing, that thoughts were a sense of their own. They are, we have so many of them, but we have elevated them and allowed them to, to rule our life. So we run our machine constantly. The act of noticing as you do in meditation will help remove you one step. And I'm gonna say this and then I'll stop. A lot of people meditate in meditation. I meditate every day and it's awesome. But in my mind, Meditation is only good if you can watch the stillness inside, cultivate the awareness of watching your thoughts and watching your body like I'm describing. But it's only good if you can recapture that in the middle of your day, in the middle of this situation where you're about to go crazy because you're standing in line behind five people and you only have three minutes to get out of the store, whatever it is, you have to bring that calmness and that self awareness into that moment. Otherwise, it's not worth saying. Sense. So cultivating your watcher, making a habit of it. And here's the last piece on that. You have to practice it in the good times, not just in the stressful times, because you cannot, it's a muscle. This, this awareness thing is a muscle. And if you cultivate in the good times, like, wow, I notice how joyful I feel from that experience I just had watching this show or connecting with this person at the coffee shop. Notice how joyful you are. Use the muscle in the good times. That's when it's going to show up as a reflex when you get into the stressful situations. Exactly. Oh, my okay. God. And I like, when I teach my clients, I teach them to be the observer instead of the judge. 
and put that judging self aside, which is exactly what you're saying. And so many people are so self criticism, criticism, self critical. They just are always uh, judging, and and when we become the watcher, and doing that in the good times is brilliant because then if it becomes the habit, it's much harder to do when you're mad. Let me just add to that. You know, we judge other people all the time. It's it's a, a, a survival mechanism. That's how you make decisions in the world but when you're to not judge to have compassion for yourself and I say don't give your watcher net because it'll start to take on a personality just call it the, let it be the watcher but put a smile on it so that as you're observing yourself you do it with compassion for yourself don't judge yourself don't beat yourself up what you just said is really really critical Awesome. All right. Let's, let's, uh, I mean, this is great. And I would love to delve into understanding more about thoughts as a sense uh, that I've never heard of it like that. And, uh, and then what that would mean, you know, so I'm uh, doing an intuitive activation class. I think of intuition as a sense. Uh, you know, we think of that before as a sixth sense. So then where do thoughts come up with, you know, become a, another sense. You know, what does that mean right. for us in our lives? I don't know. Uh, you feel free if you have a, a something to talk about. And then let's get into the exercises so that we can do them. I'm so excited. Okay. Well, we just did a little mini exercise on awareness, your physical, your emotional, your thoughts. The next piece in, in is diving into your heart. I call it heart sourced vision. Now, I do whole workshops on uh, people getting more engaged in what's really passionate for them. So in just minutes, let's do it this way. I just want you to touch the feeling of what it is to be passionate, okay? So close your eyes for a minute if you're willing to or just get into your zone and think about something either in your life now or maybe in your past that you miss that makes your whole body resonate. It could be when you're out hiking, you know, and you're with people, when you're helping somebody. It could be when you're fly fishing. It could be a moment where you were part of a team. It could be a moment when you're in solitude. Something that resonates with your heart and your whole you can just feel it. It's as if you were meant to do that thing and nothing else. This is the part of your whole body and your heart that is resonates. It's the passion and the natural and that, that drives you and attracts you to the things that were meant to uncover the magnificence that you are. So we can't take too long to do this, but there are different places in your life, in your spiritual life where you're passionate, in your work life where you're passionate, in your personal life, in your relationships, in your physical life, in your health that life, you know. So these are all the vibrant places where natural energy occurs. Your heart is like a giant storage battery of energy. It stores the positive and the negative, but getting at that source of energy that's natural to you is what touching your passion is all about. Now, let's take a breath and feel that resonating in you. And I'll describe to you that if you can picture your your greatest vision for your life, no barriers whatsoever in your life, and picture of the source of your heart going out, 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 up into the world, getting wider and wider into infinity, where you and the universe were connecting with your greatest heart source vision. That's what we're after. That's your magnificence, okay? Now open your eyes if you haven't already here, because we have to come back to reality, because here's what's happened. This V that's coming out of your heart, that's going up to make your vision from your passion, as soon as it hits right here, 
there's this umbrella that's your limiting factors your your uh the three-headed mind monster that stops the vision it's going 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 and then all of a sudden your fear your self-doubt your limiting beliefs just stop it and the self-awareness is about recognizing when it hits that umbrella setting it aside setting aside your fears whether it's through hypnosis or self-awareness or your watcher whatever the way is that you do it so that you can sweep away all the stuff that's keeping your vision from happening. It's keeping you from stepping into the last A in the aha. You have your self-awareness, your heart source vision, and stepping into action. That's what aha, the aha MQ formula is about. Okay, so that was awesome. Yeah. Okay. So if I understand correctly, so what you did is you had us take our vision, but notice as it expands, if a negative thought comes in or, or some kind of fear and it, and instead of going even farther, it kind of stops. Is that what, yeah. is that? What and they're everywhere. They're like, Oh, I'll never accomplish this. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. People don't like me, you know, Stuart Smiley and all of that. These voices that are in our head that come from our childhood, they come from people's judgments of us, they come from comparing ourselves to other people. Those fears, self-doubt, and limiting beliefs are what keep us from being our most magnificent self. And becoming aware of them, being compassionate with yourself, setting them aside, or breaking through them, whatever, either way you want to look at it, that's what we're talking about here in the small moments as well as in the larger moments. You know, those marathoners and people, they don't get there. All of a sudden they train, they do it a little at a time. So if you can notice things a little at a time through your day, then it will automatically lead to bigger things opening up before you know it. Yeah. As a, as a hypnotist, I help people break through their limiting beliefs, you know, every sing, almost every single session. Uh, mm -hmm. tuning in and releasing them and it's a fast and effective way to do it. So if you observe them and you notice you can't change them, that's when you want to work with somebody who works with, makes change in the subconscious mind. But what, I, what if I hear you correctly as what, if you really, really become more self-aware and become the watcher, then you can tune into all those negative thoughts and those limiting beliefs and change them. Yes. Well, let go of them. I mean, you know, it, change them, let go of them, break through them. It's all language. Words just point to the to the experience of whatever the block is. Sometimes when I work with people, I don't even use words. I just do visuals completely. You know, what, what is that thing that's standing in your way look like? Does it have a color? Does it have a shape? What's on the other side? Does it have a color? Does you can do this with the conscious or the subconscious in the same way. I'm here. I want to go here. Something standing in my way. It's blocking me. What is it? Can I go around it, through it, over it, make it melt away about it? It's all good stuff. Awesome. So, all right. And I like We have your one more exercise. Let's get to that then. Uh, trying to keep things moving. Basically, uh, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm borrowing this from Tim Ferriss, who wrote the four minute, uh, the four hour work week. And he's got an exercise called fear setting. So, fear is one of the biggest things we have in our most magnificent self. And the fears come from outside you know, the, from the environment, and they are, they are, it's just like the weather when it rains or whatever it is, but it's really how to the fear that Matt has got this amazing fear setting. And you can do this later, but I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through the, the principle of it, which is think about whatever it is that you really want to accomplish that you're afraid, okay, and write that, that down. OK, and, and we're not going to take a lot of time here, but write that down now in the next column, 
write down all that could happen. What's the worst case scenario that could happen in this thing that you want to accomplish? You know, you could fall on your face. People could judge you. Somebody could reject you. Uh, you could fail. Whatever the thing is that you want to accomplish, right? The next piece is so you're so you're facing your fear. You're looking at it. You're saying, "Oh my God! Oh my God! That could happen! Oh, I'll never do that. Could happen." The next piece is, what could you do to pro potentially prevent all or part of the worst case scenario happening? Okay. Well, you could not do it, of course. That's one thing you could do is non non action. But what measure could you set in place to to do something. So for example, um, let's say you want to go out on a date with somebody and you might get rejected, right? Or you want to tell somebody something, but you're feeling really uh, ashamed of it, okay? So you have something you want to reveal to them, but you're ashamed of it, right? What's one of the things that you could do to prevent the worst case scenario of rejecting it? Well, in this that quick example, one of the things that you could do is you could acknowledge your shame. You could begin your your communication with them by saying, "Listen, I'm feeling a little ashamed here, and I'm feeling like there's a possibility that you're going to reject me." Okay, and I want to share this with you. So you're you're putting a measure of authenticity into it, okay? So there are things that we can do. Um, you know, if you want to rock climb like I do, and, uh, there's going to be a risk, right? Well, what can you do to help prevent the risk of injury? You can educate yourself. You can make sure your harness is on right. You can make sure the rope is solid. You can make sure you trust the person on the other end of the belay line. You can put measures to prevent the worst case scenario from happening, all right? And then the final thing that you need to look at with fears is, let's say the worst case scenario happens. Let's say it does. Let's say the person rejects you. Then what, right? Then what? Well, visualize what your next step would be, okay? I just went through a separation of, from, you know, the, you know, divorce, 10 years, okay, for people watching this show that don't know it's and and it's hard, right? But visualize what's gonna happen and what the possible the new possibilities would be in that worst case scenario. And let me tell you, having botulism and getting paralyzed and not being able to communicate with the people right there next to me, except for my eye movements. I mean, that was pretty devastating, right? It gave me a pretty big perspective and appreciation and gratitude. For so as bad as you think my, things might be, there are new possibilities that can be formed. So this fear setting exercise is anything small or large, but here's the point to get back to the formula. You have yourself, have your vision of what you really want to accomplish. You have to become aware of these things and sweep away your fear, your self-doubt, who told you you weren't lovable? Who told you you weren't worth it? Where did you get that story? It's not yours, get rid of it, rewrite the tape, hypnosis, self-awareness, whatever it is, and move on. Follow your heart and lead your most magnificent life. Just do it. Thank you, Z. Okay. Oh my God. And thank you, that was wonderful. And I, and Val says, uh, she said earlier, awesome stories and examples of big ahas and micro ahas. So thank you for that. And that was great because I love that last I've I. So in Dale Carnegie's book, uh, how to stop worrying and start living, he talks about taking your worst case scenario all the way through. But I don't remember him saying, what will your next step be? And that's brilliant because then you're like okay i i can handle it okay my next step and you just kind of know that you can handle it and it puts a sense of ease and then you can go through it so that was brilliant thank you for all of this you guys 
This is great. We're coming near to the end of the show. You have been an no. outstanding, let me rephrase that, magnificent um, person to interview today. And thank you for sharing those magnificent exercises. And I encourage all of you to continue to include those in your life and be the observer. And guess what? There are ways that you can work more with uh, Z, if you want to know more about Z, if you want to connect with him, Z, how can people get a hold of you and learn more from you? Uh, well, the easiest thing is to go to my website, Z Newell, just the letter Z, N E W E L L, Z Newell.com. And you can download a sample of the book. You can get it on Amazon, but if you go, you can download a sample of the book there. You can uh, find me. I mainly like groups and organizations. If you have a group that you're interested in me working with to do a workshop or some kind of a keynote speech, I'm willing to look at working with people individually. I tend not to do that as much. You've got good coaches like Randy here, but I love making connections with people. Friend me on Facebook under Z Newell or Ivan Z Newell is my first name. My mother loves that name. She's probably watching this too. <laughs> um, but basically go to the website znewell.com and all the information is there. Great. Okay. And you know what? He sent me the book, you guys. It's awesome. I mean, I was just engrossed. I've only gotten, a, you know, partially into it, but I was totally engrossed in the story. I'm told, I love how you write. It's so easy to read and it makes so much sense. You know, I mean, it's in a magnificent story how you and I met and our, my friends, our, our mutual friends insisted that I come over and meet you. And now here you are. So that is so cool. I know. I love it. It open to possibility. They called you. You're like, no, I have an appointment. I have to go. And they're like, but you realize, oh, maybe there's something, you know, so you set that aside. Let's not worry about being late. Let's make time happen. And you just showed up. Great. But you caught yourself. You didn't get caught in the story of I don't have time for this. You created the time. That's time is one of our biggest. Yeah. So that was great. Yeah. I'm was, glad. Yeah. Because we speak the same. I'm language. excited to hear. I love it. So you guys, here's the thing. If you want to, if you want to break through, if you know there's things in your way, hypnosis is a great way to break through those limiting beliefs to help you become the observer or the watcher instead of the judge and be your best version of yourself. So I, I just feel like I need to say to you, if you want to you know, reach out to me and work with me privately to break through those limiting beliefs and things that are in your way, those fears, that three headed monster, then I'm going to offer uh, from you listening to this uh, $50 savings on a, uh, either a session. I always encourage to do the essential four because it's, it's the most effective at change, but uh, $50 towards e either. So you just say you met, you saw this and reach out. You can you just private message me at Randy light or go to Randy or Randy light at Gmail. Just get a hold of me. There's so, you know, you can get a hold of people so easily. So let me just say that next week's show, we also have another awesome guest and she, it, her book is a brand new Amazon bestseller as well. And the law, she's a law of attraction expert, Victoria Gallagher. And the show is going to be how to manifest your desires with the law of attraction. So that's on Tuesdays at noon. I might change up the dates and times of, of when we do this, but for now it's Tuesdays at noon. Uh, Z, thanks so much again for being a part of the show. If you want to say goodbye, this is a good time. Yes, thank you all. Go out there and be your magnificent self. Ignite your magnificence. Thank you for having me here. Yes. Okay. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Ignite that magnificence. <laughs>